Okay, we're going to take a look at numbers raised to the zero, zeroth power. Uh, we've already laid the groundwork for uh, numbers raised to a power, but now we're going to specifically look at the power of zero. So, in your math journal, let us summarize our main conclusions about exponents. That is, for any numbers, x and y, and for any positive integers, m and n, the following holds. And you might want to put these on an index card, too, to keep these all together. But the first item is that if we have x to the nth power times x to the nth power, then that is the same as adding the exponents and having x raised to the power of m plus n. The second one is if we have a number raised to a power and then repeated uh, that number repeated several times, or we say raised to another power, that is the same as multiplying the exponents, m times n, and x being raised to that power. And the third one is that if we have two numbers that are being multiplied, and those, are ra those combined are raised to a power of n, then you can separate that and say that it can be x to the nth power times y to the nth power. So those are the three, in the last two lessons, those are the three definitions and properties that we have proven. There's also, or before we go on, go ahead and on your lesson worksheet, highlight those key points on the conclusions about exponents. You want to make sure you memorize these, practice presenting these out loud, because you're going to need to use these definitions um, when you present in class. So these three items are very important to um, memorize. On your worksheet, you'll notice a line that says definition. Don't fill that out right now. We'll do it later. All right, so continuing in your math journal again, we are going to add two more conclusions to our list for a total of five. And again, if you're doing an uh, index card, you want to include these two um, after the first three that we did. And that would be that when we divide at numbers that are raised to a power, that is the same as subtracting the exponents. And keeping in mind that the, in the numerator, the exponent in the numerator has to be greater than the exponent in the denominator for now. And that is, again, assuming that x is greater than 0. And the last one, if we have a fraction base or a fractional base raised to the nth power, then that can also be applied to the numerator and denominator. So x being the numerator is raised to the power of n which means y as the denominator is raised to the power of n. And again, that is assuming that y is greater than 0. All right, there is an obvious reason why x in the fourth um, property and y in the fifth property must be non-zero is because we cannot divide by 0. So we still have to make that statement that x and y have to be uh, something other than zero or greater than zero. However, the reason for further restricting x and y to be positive is only given when fractional exponents have been defined, and this will be done in high school. So when we talk about fractional exponents, you'll worry about that in high school. Right now we are just worrying about positive integers, and then we're going to apply that to whole numbers. So we're going to group the equations 1 through 3 together because they are the foundation, hence the reason why I asked you to memorize these, on which all the other results about exponents rests. When they are suitably generalized, as we will be doing, uh, they will imply the other two equations in 4 and 5. Therefore, we're not going to worry about 4 and 5 right now. We're just going to concentrate on 1 through 3. The most important feature of equations 1 through 3 is that they are very simple and they are symbolically natural. 
So it's very easy to represent this with symbols. Math math mathematicians want these three identities to continue to hold for all exponents m and n, not just positive exponents, without the restriction that m and n be positive integers because of these two desirable qualities. First of all, it is simple, and second, because it is natural. So we will have to do this one step at a time. Our goal in this grade, for grade 8, is to extend the validity of 1 through 3 to all integers, m and n. But we're going to start with whole numbers first. So here's our first exploratory challenge in your math journal. The first step to this direction is to introduce the definition of the zeroth exponent of a positive number and then use it to prove that the, those equations 1 through 3 remain valid when m and n are not just positive integers but all whole numbers. And remember a whole number is a positive integer and zero. So since our goal is to make sure 1 through 3 remain valid even when m and n m and n may be zero, the very definition of the zeroth exponent of a number must pose no obvious contradictions, meaning that we shouldn't be able to contradict uh, using those equations even though we are using the zero power. So with this in mind, let us consider what it means to raise a positive number x to a zeroth power. So here's our example. What should 3 to the 0th power mean? Go ahead and make a guess. And what do you think, if we have 3 raised to the 0th power, what do you think it means? Well, you probably responded that 3 to the 0th power should equal 0. So let's say that, let's see why that would contradict our existing understanding of properties of experience using the first equation, specifically if m is a positive integer and if we let 3 to the 0th power equal 0, then what we would have is 3 to the nth power times 3 to the 0th power should be 3 to the m plus 0. Well, but since we let 3 to the 0th power equal 0, it means that the left side of the equation would equal 0. So here's the left side. If this is 0, then 3 to the nth power times 0 is obviously going to be 0. So that creates a contradiction because if this is 0, this is 3, and this could be 1 or 2 or 5 or 100, and 100 plus 0 means that we have 3 to the 100th power. Well, obviously, 3 to the 100th power is not going to be 0, so this isn't going to work. The, if we are saying 3 to the 0th power is 0, then this doesn't work for, um, for m and m being uh, all whole numbers. So, therefore, letting 3 to the 0th power equal 0 will not, not help us extend 1 through 3 to all whole numbers m and n. All right, so maybe you should say that 3 to the 0th power equals 3. Well, there's two problematic issues with that. First, we already have learned that by definition, x to the first power equals x in lesson 1. So any number raised to the first power is the number itself. And we do not want to have two powers that yield the same result. So we can't say that 3 to the 0th power is 3 when 3 to the first power is 3. That wouldn't make any sense. And second, it would violate the existing rules again that we have developed. And again, using specifically the first equation, if we let 3 to the 0th power be 3, then we'd have 3 to the nth power times 3. But in this case, if 3 to the nth power means 3 times 3 m times and 3 to the 0th power is times 3, then it, in essence what we have is 3 m plus 1. Well, that can't be 3. Okay, 3 to the 
m plus 0 is not the same as 3 to the m plus 1, which is another contradiction. Since they don't equal each other, then 3 to the 0th power being 3 is not going to work. So if we believe that equation 1 should hold even when, let us say, n is equal to 0, then let's use an example like this. If we say 3 to the second power is the same as 3 to the second power plus 0, then that means 3 to the second power times 3 to the zeroth power. Well, if 3 to the second plus 0 is 3 to the second power, we can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3 to the second power, which is 1 over 3 to the second power, and we're going to end up with 1 being equal to z 3 to the zeroth power. So let's show the work on this. So we're taking this equation here, and we're multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. So 3 to the second power times 1 over 3 to the second power is 1, and 3 to the second power times 1 over 3 to the second power is 1. Well, and that means 1 is equal to 1 times 3 to the zeroth power. Well, 1 times what number is going to be equal to 1? Which means 1 is equal to 3 to the zeroth power. So in the same way, in our belief that 1 should hold true whether e or either m or n is 0 would lead us to the conclusion that we should define any number raised to the zeroth power is going to be equal to 1 for any non-zero x. So again, x can't be 0, but it could be any other number. Therefore, we give the following definition, which you will need to write down. For any positive number x, notice we're saying for any positive number, we are going to find that x to the zeroth power is going to be equal to 1. Copy this definition in your lesson worksheet on the line provided. So where it says definition, go ahead and write this down. And also this should be highlighted in your math journal. All right, so let's take a look at exploratory challenge number two. So now that we know that x to the nth power is defined for all whole numbers n, check carefully that um, equations one through three remain valid for all whole numbers m and n. Remember, whole numbers mean zero, one, two, etc. So try answering the question for exercise one on your lesson worksheet. A hint is that your answers are about what other numbers can m and n be. Okay, so if it says that m is greater than 0 and n is greater than 0, then what other numbers can m and n be that are whole numbers? Go ahead and answer that and then restart the video. Alright, so this is what you should have. So in case A, you can have, if m is greater than 0 and n is greater than 0, well then m can be greater than 0, and the other option is n is equal to 0. Or, instead of m being greater than 0, m could be equal to 0, and n can be greater than 0. And then last but not least, in the th third situation, m is 0 and n is 0. So these are the three possible or all the possible cases. Either m and n are both greater than zero, one or the other is greater than zero and the other one is equal to zero, and then both of them are equal to zero. So let's check the validity of case A with the equation, the first equation, m or x to the nth power times x to the zero is equal to x to the nth power. So this is the beginning of exercise two. I will walk you through the first case and then you will do the second cases on, or second and third case on your own. So if m is greater than zero and n is equal to zero, that comes from up here, case A, is x to the nth power times x to the zeroth power equal to x to the nth power? Well, yes. Because if x to the nth power times x to the zeroth power 
is the same, and again replacing x to the zeroth power with 1, well, 1 times any number, in this case x to the nth power, is x to the nth power. So that is our proof. Now you're going to try this yourself. Complete exercise 2 by checking the validity for case B. That means x to the zeroth power times x to the nth power equals x to the nth power. And for the third case, x to the zeroth power times x to the zero power is x to the zero power. Go ahead and try it, even though this might make, not make complete sense. The answers for these two questions should be similar to what we just did for the first case. So give it a shot and then continue the video and check your answers. Alright, so here's what you should have for exercise two. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you uh, write them down, highlight it so you remember to answer or to ask those in class. Alright, so next we're going to do this with exercise three on your lesson worksheet. And again, I'll walk you through the first one. So now we're going to use equation two. That is x to the mth raised to the power of n is equal to x to the mth times n. And we're checking each case, so let's start with case A again. So, if m is greater than 0 and n is equal to 0, is x to the nth power raised to the 0 power the same as x to the 0 times nth power? Well, the answer is yes, because x to the nth power is a number. Okay, this is still representing a number, it's just in symbols. And when it is raised to a power of 0, which it's being done right here, then the value is 1, which we've already defined. 1 is equal to x to the 0th power, and we can display x to the 0th power as 0 times m, which is what's happening right here. So on the left side, we'll break this up between left and right side of the equation. We have x to the mth power raised to the zeroth power is x to the zero times m by definition, and that is going to be equal to one. On the right side of the equation, we had x to the zero times m, which is equal to x to the zero, because zero times n is zero, which is also equal to one. So both of these uh, descriptions will work. So now it's your turn to try it with case B and case C. Same as what we did with exercise one, you're now gonna do with exercise two. When you are done, again, try it, then continue the video to check your answers. All right, so for exercise three, here's what you should have for case B and case C. They are both yes, and here are the explanations that yours should sound like. If you have, again, if you have any questions, write a question, highlight it, so you can ask it in class. All right, let's continue on and do this with exercise four. We are using the equation, the third equation, which is the quantity of, or the product of x times y raised to the power of n is the same as x to the nth power and y to the nth power. And we are checking each case. So again, let's start with case A. So if m is greater than 0 and n is equal to 0 is the product of x times y raised to the 0th power the same as x to the 0 power times x to the, or y to the 0 power. Notice how we don't have an m in this case because there is no m up here. So this is kind of a moot point. So anyways, the answer to this is yes, because the left side is 1, because any number, and again, this is representing one number, raised to the zeroth power is 1. And the right side is also 1, because x to the zeroth power is 1, times y to the zeroth power, which is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. So this is also true. All right, now it's your turn to try it with case B and case C. Again, using only what we know as far as our definition, see if you can 
explain it for both those situations. When you're done, go ahead and continue the video and check your answers. All right, so here is the answers to exercise four. Again, one is already stated, and then here is our uh, case A is stated, and here's B and C. All right, exploratory challenge three. You will be practicing writing numbers in expanded notation in exercises five and six, and you will use a definition of x to the zeroth power for any positive number x learned in this lesson. So we want to see that the ones digit multiplied by 10 to the zeroth power. Why? Because 10 to the zeroth is equal to what? Well, it's equal to 1. So this is an important part of the expanded notation, and it's going to lead to the use of negative powers of 10 for decimals when we get to lesson 5. So this should be a review. You should have already had some experience with writing these numbers in expanded notation. If you have forgotten, then go ahead and continue and look at the answers, and I'm sure you will, your memory will be refreshed. All right, so answer questions five and six on the lesson worksheet. Check your answers when you are done. All right, this is what you should have for exercise five and six. These should look familiar to you as you write these in exponential notation showing the powers of 10. Again, notice that when you get to the 4, it is still being multiplied by a power of 10. It's just that that power of 10 is to the 0th power because this would essentially be 4 times 1. And the same thing here, it would be 2 times 1. All right, so let's wrap this up. The rules of exponents that we have worked on prior to today only worked for positive integer exponents. So that would be 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Now we have shown that we can apply the same rules have been extended to all whole numbers because whole numbers include zero. The next logical step, which we'll be doing uh, in, in a little bit, is to attempt to extend these rules to all integer exponents. Remember that the definition of integer are negatives, zero, and positives. All right, we'll see you in class.